again, we're in 2020, so who knows anything? Who knows what's normal anymore? I don't. Um, speaking of things that aren't normal or maybe are the new normal, game cancellations due to COVID. Um, they've been happening up and down the coast, all the way across the nation, left, right, and center. Um, they're absolutely terrible because when one team cancels, it ruins the the hopes and dreams of two teams for that week, as well as future plans. Um, obviously, Huskies fan, Husky fans everywhere know about this because Berkeley had to cancel their game. Uh, the other cancellation, I think, was uh, the Utah game. Utah had to cancel against Arizona. Right, against Arizona. Yeah, so Utah yeah. had to cancel their game against Arizona, which sucks. Um, some funny notes about that. I think right after uh, Berkeley, whoever canceled second out of Utah and Berkeley, whichever one of them Utah. canceled. So right after Utah canceled, someone flashed a thing that was like, hey, go get go get Arizona and UW to play a game. Like, go get Arizona. And apparently it was like, they talked about it for like 20 minutes in a conference somewhere. And then they were just like, yeah, there's not enough time. We don't have planes. We have no idea where to go to get to the field. Like we don't know what we're doing. And so like, that was like a dream, I think for about 15 minutes in a press, con- uh, in a, in like a little meeting conference thing between coaches. Yeah. And yeah. I saw that. I think, I mean, that, that would have been so fun. The fans would have loved it. Everybody would have loved it, but really it wasn't plausible. I mean, you have three, three days, I think it would have been to prepare for a whole nother team. And one of the main things that made it so it didn't happen was simply UW and Arizona already are scheduled to play each other on, I think, week three, I believe. And so then what are you going to do then? Are you going to try and schedule? I mean, what, like, you just have an empty week then. You're not going to play two times in three weeks. So yeah, it was the kind of a combination of the short time, no preparation for that opponent, and just having them on the schedule already. Yeah. Um, one exciting thing though, to talk about game cancellations in terms of good news, but some, some bad news first, I guess, I guess to get to the good news, um, the Berkeley area, their, their government, their governor, their health department, whatever it is, they, they have the ruling for two weeks of, of quarantine after a positive case. So with one of them, at least having that positive case and them waiting on, uh, the contact tracing tests that they did that they did for who came into contact with the unnamed player. Um, two weeks if they test positive means that the ASU game for Berkeley might also get canceled. Depending on Utah's policy, their next game against UCLA, UCLA might also have to be canceled. So with all of this information ahead of time and the ability to see this coming, one thing that has been talked about that has a slightly higher chance than what I mentioned for like this past weekend impromptu game is that we do have a slightly higher chance of seeing a UCLA versus an Arizona. Um, that one is on the table. So like they are uh, the league, the administrators, uh, coaches and staff from school to school, they're all working together to make sure things can kind of happen, even though we might have game cancellations here and there. Um, we're just hoping, I'm just hoping that, we get this week's game for us. Like, I don't care what happens with the rest of the league at this point. I just want us to get our game this week and the weeks following. Um, that's just kind of the the news about what's going to happen around game cancellations, what might happen afterwards. Um, what do you think about a UCLA-Arizona game happening next week? How, how plausible do you think that is? Um, like, talking about this Saturday? Would Sorry, be this that? Saturday. Yeah, yes. this Saturday. It would be so, this Saturday. Yeah, I don't think it's plausible. Again, kind of the same for the UW-Arizona game because they don't find out until two days before they're scheduled to travel. And bringing in kind of Cal and their 14-day quarantine period, it's really tough on the school. I mean, people have, people have actually asked, like the coach, Justin Wilcox, I believe, are you guys thinking about moving locations just to avoid the strict rules at Berkeley? I mean... It's tough how it is, 14-day quarantine, just for being in like the area on close contact with another guy. I mean, just one guy at Cal tested positive. He was asymptomatic. And everyone else who was close contact has not had a positive test. They've been tested each day, I believe. And they haven't had one positive test, but they still aren't cleared. So it's going to be tough for Cal to play this week. I don't know if they're going to, I don't know what when they're going to decide. But bringing it back to like, how shaky it was and the possibility of more games being canceled. I think for sure we're going to have more games in the Pac-12 canceled. Just look at, I mean, week one, two games were already canceled, especially in certain states, the different rulings, certain counties, the more strict areas. The one bit of positive news, though, that I saw 
Jimmy Lake commented on the Cal situation, and he actually said that if it had happened at UW, the game wouldn't have been canceled. So at least as far as we're aware, the UW contact tracing um, rules for here aren't as strict as they are in Berkeley. So that's a good thing, I think. Less likely UW's at fault for one of these cancellations. Don't want to jinx anything. And then bringing it back to, I just lost my train of thought, but I'm concerned each week, I guess, with a cancellation game, just from the situation of it. I mean, it's tough to tough to stop the spread, it's tough for the contact tracing. Which bringing it back to contact tracing, actually, I mean, the point of the Quidel partnership, this everyday testing for the Pac-12, was to prevent this contact tracing from being so great like it was at Cal, I guess. And I guess week one, we already saw that fail. I mean, so what's, what's the point with this daily testing? You're testing every day. If Even if you test every day, you get someone come back positive. Next thing you know, you've got a whole offensive line group or whole offensive li- or defensive line group out because they were near the guy for, I think, Cal was like, if you're near him for 15 minutes or something, you get close contact. So I'm, I'm confused on the Quidel testing and how it's actually helping. Um, so the, the, the Quidel testing from, if my memory serves me correctly, is, is absolutely there. Not, it's not there as a stopgap measure. Mm-hmm. Actually, that's not the right word. Sorry. It's not there as like an end all measure. It's not there as a, the thing to replace all other items there. It's supposed to be there to work in tandem with contact tracing. It's there to work in tandem with the, um, the non-daily, anti, uh, non-daily tests, like the full scale tests to do like the super or relatively super accurate readings. That's all supposed to work together in tandem. Um, now, the rules down in Berkeley are a lot stricter, even though they are partnering with Quidel still, as the entire league is. Um, however, I do know that they immediately pulled that athlete out. They then went through their contact ta- uh, contact tracing protocol, which was to view footage from the past five days, see everyone he's come into contact, how much time it happened. And they did end up having to take out their entire position group, which I think you mentioned earlier. We still don't know what position group that is. Um, but that's that's the goal, is to have that happen. The length of time necessary, though, I mean, that's up for debate. I'm personally not an expert, so I can't really comment on that. But the main goal of contact tracing in these daily tests is to limit the, the secondary spreads, because that's where the numbers start to get really big. I mean, you have one person giving it to three or four, maybe. Sure, that's four new people who get it. Contact tracing and its biggest, I think, positive that comes out of this, especially in the Berkeley situation, is that because they pulled that entire position group, which is that three to four infection rate, now they have no worry about those three to four, that entire position group, getting those secondary tracings. And I think that's the most important thing to take away from this is that we had a system. Yes, it may have been flawed. I think the biggest point, though, is to say we had a system in place, a set of rules, a set of guidelines. We followed them. We cut back. For as much as we know right now, we cut back on as many secondary exposures and infections as possible. That's the system being put in place. That's the system working. I'm happy to see it, even though it may be a little janky. The time limits may be a little off. That's the main point, I think, here for me. I think that's one of the the greater things to focus on. And and I think that's kind of how Quidel is playing into this. I mean, obviously, we never want to see anyone get infected. We never want to see these things happening. Um, But yeah, that's my two cents. Do you have anything else to say on it? Um, no, I think you covered it good. I think that just the Quidel contact tracing is supposed to get those players spotted and out of there quickly. It's just about which county or which, what your local rules are as far as who gets selected for that contact tracing and how long they're actually out for. Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the other things that, that definitely played a factor in this as well and why they went so far back as five days was because the player was asymptomatic. So they don't have any... I guess, clear guidelines on how long of a timeline they need to be looking for. So that situation in itself sucks, really specific, really uh, intricate. Um, But yeah, I wish that player, all the other players who are infected or have uh, come into contact with those guys, I wish them all the best.